going to start recording. <laughs> That's kind of what my vision was too, was hot pink. And it's far from that, so we're going to have a lot more work to do, I think. It's still kind of wet, so. Yeah, disappointing day on the beauty front, have to say. <laughs> okay, so tonight we're going to be making this wonderful scrapbook page. And... We are going to be using some Sunkiss papers and also, actually I think it's only like one Sunkiss paper and the rest is Almanac. So the two go really well together and I really like how the two lines kind of blend. Um, so we're going to kind of work with that. We're going to work with layers, adding a few art mediums, nothing too crazy. I will tell you I do have to substitute a couple flowers because I don't have them and I wasn't able to get them. So I just want to let you know. And if I start coughing, I apologize because I'm dealing with cold. The germ, back to school germs that like to surface this time of year. So let me go ahead and point the camera back down. Enough with my horrible hair. Oh. oh. It's kind of disappointing, a little heartbreaking. Okay, so what I started out with was a simple white piece of cardstock. And this, what we're going to do is we're just gonna kind of alter the edges. It gives us a base to build our page off of. And I'm going to use some of the, um, Prima chalk inks. I'm going to use knotted wood. Knotted wood or dark bark would work, either one of those. Um, with the tones will um, go together. I'm going to use knotted wood. So let's go ahead and move our papers out. Now my light's going to get a little dark because of this white paper. So I will, let me see if I can find something to fix that. It gets a little testy. Let's see if my channel changer helps a little. Ah! Come on, computer, camera. Okay, let's see if it stays in focus with that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to take our little chalk ink right around the edge. We don't have to do the whole thing because it's only the edge we're going to be seeing. And I know I'm getting it on my cut mat. Oh, the horror! As you can see, I use it for everything, yeah? So we're just going to take our little chalk ink right around the edge. Giving it a little distressed, aged look. Taking the newness away from the white cardstock. Taking this inwards. And as you can see, my edges are a little bit darker right around the edge because that raw paper um, at the edge picks up the ink differently than the rest of the page will. So, going around, going around. Okay, I want to soften this up a little. And a great way to do that is to go over it with some mist. And I'm just going to take some Perfect Pearls Mist in Heirloom Gold. And I'm just going to go right around the edge. You don't need it real heavy. This just kind of softens up our um, chalk inks a little bit. I need another one. I need a lar another large mat. Just saying. I need a backup. I've destroyed this one. Okay. Clean up my mess. Because, as you all know, I am not the best at keeping my room clean. So, okay, we have our background. And I have a very upset little boy outside. I'm just going to take a few little pieces of this um, cardboard. Now you can see on this one I have like an actually variegated piece of paper. Um, you could use a variegated piece of paper. Oh, come on. My camera is not cooperating. 
Um, I have. You could use variegated paper or you could use cards or cardboard. I'm using cardboard because ah, it's free, and I'd ra rather just use it up instead of buying something else. So here is. Let's see. I just want a couple small pieces because what I'm going to do is use these as little peekaboos, kind of outside our top layer of main paper. Okay, come on. The camera doesn't like the white paper. That's why it keeps unfocusing. And I apologize. Our ch channel changer is going to be the base there. But what it what we're going we're trying to do is build a little bit of layering behind. So I'm just going to rip off a few pieces. Doesn't have to be anything big. Nothing too extravagant. Kind of like placing them here and there. So Okay. I missed step two. Yeah, right, huh? So, okay. Let's put another one, let's say up here. Nothing, I mean, there's no real rhyme or reason. We just want a couple little peekaboos to put onto the background. All right. So next what we're going to do is we're going to take our paper. Now let me show you the papers we're going to be working with. These are some of the almanac papers. This one is Libra, Libre, Libre. And we're going to be using some of these uh, letters for our title. We're going to be using one of these uh, little tags kind of as a peekaboo subtitle because they have the nice little words up top. And we also have a few little elements that you could add in other papers as well. We have this pretty background that you could use um, bits and pieces of as well. And let me see. We're not going to be using that. We are going to be using this piece, though. So that page is there. We're going to be using also Edison. And this one we're going to be use like this tag right here. Some of the wording we're going to be using to drape off of and make banners out of. So there's bits and pieces from that line. And then this one I'm going to be using this background sheet. Or I'm just going to cut a big piece out, kind of help layer. And this page is Wordsmith. I like this one too. This sheet would make perfect sheet to uh, create a mini album out of. And this is going to be our main background. And this one's Songbird. And the page is called Collage. And this is the side we're going to be using. And then this is the other side, which is a nice, you know, lined school looking paper, which is pretty cool. So let me go ahead and cut my paper. Now, another little joyous thing is I lost my little blade for my cutter. So we're going to be using my craft knife and winging it. Okay, peeps. See how badly I can cut my finger off. Okay. I think it went missing at my last set of classes, which kind of is a bummer because I really like this cutter. It's my favorite, but that's okay we can deal, right? All right. So we have this one and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it down just a little bit, not too much. I just want to cut maybe, let's say, um, I don't even think an inch. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear um, poor little Q man right now, but he's not in a very joyful mood. Okay, I'm going to cut a half inch off of each width, width and height. Oop. 
Come on. It would help if the track on my cut mat was clean, huh? And I slipped, but that's okay because we're going to use our um, distressing tool to clean that out. So that's okay. So again, we're going to do half an inch. Good thing this thing has a nice deep groove in it so it's easy to cut. No, he's just, he does this almost every time, you guys. I don't know. I hope you can't hear him. He's His room's right next to mine, so you could hear him. I, I'm really sorry, you guys. <laughs> just a second, real quick, okay? Okay, let's take that again. <laughs> All right, I apologize. So we have the songbird paper rewind, and we took a half inch off of the width and the height. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take our distressing tool. He's six years old, you guys. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take our distressing tool, and I'm going to cut. I'm going to take a couple spots first, and I'm going to take like a little kind of rip in the top. And then like another little rip at the side, just to give it the extra oomph. And what I do when using the distressing tool is I take my distressing bed and I run it into the paper. And this kind of peels the top layer off the page without making too much of a mess. And then what I do is I go around the edge like this. And you can kind of roll it to kind of give it more uh, of an aged look. All the way around the edge. Just kind of here and there. Oh, I love this tool. This is my favorite distressing tool. Take this right around the edge, kind of break the clean edge a little bit. Nothing too drastic. Okay. Clean off some of the sawdust, the shavings, whatever you want to call them, the mess. That's what they should be called. Okay. And now we have our little distressed piece. And I just took lightly, I took our distressing ink or chalk ink, and I just kind of lift, ran it around the edge where we lifted the paper. Just a little bit, nothing too heavy or extravagant, because we want to keep this pretty light. I mean, you can if you want darken it. It's your preference, of course. I'm just giving you the tools, and you guys make the projects. But the rest of the colors of the page are pretty um, light and subtle. So adding a really harsh line around the edge will take away from the rest of the page. So we're just lightly 
adding a little contrast. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Got a little dark over here, but that's okay. So, next what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my three-dimensional foam squares, which I love to use, as you all know. And I'm just going to add a couple. You don't need a whole lot. They are these um, chalk inks. If you have not used them before, they have a pointed edge and then they have a wide edge. They look like a little iron. And this helps you get a, you know, cover a broad area. And then you can also get into those tight little corners on mixed media projects, on cards, on layouts. So they are, they work really well for a lot of different purposes. So I'm just going to put a few on here. Nothing too exciting. Okay. I'm going to glue these down. The glue I'm using is Fabric Tack by Beacon. It's a kind of all purpose glue adhesive. I like it because it has a little give in it. So once it dries and it sits for a while, your project's not going to start falling apart on you, which I have had in the past with other glues. So I really like this one. So let's place this down real quick. So we have our little opening up here, and I want to make sure that my little piece of cardboard sticks out, so I'm going to make sure I glue that in the little window we created. <coughs> Sorry. Kind of right there. We have this little piece down here that we're going to kind of peekaboo out. And then let's put another one. Let's put one over here. I'm just going to tear off a little piece. Nothing too big, right? Come on. Okay. Make another little distress spot here so we get a little better view of that. So I'm going to go ahead and take my little sticky backs off. Once you have it down, if you have to secure the edges a little better, go, you can go ahead and add more. Just kind of centering this onto our background. Okay. I'm going to glue this down where cardboard is at. Excuse me. Had a little hiccup there. All right. Oop. Okay. So we have our background. Now, what I'm going to do is you can alter the background to kind of soften. I like to soften the background or use a softer background so that my foreground stands out more. If you have a really heavy colored background, sometimes you lose your flowers and your picture, most importantly. You'll lose your pictures kind of in the jumble of it. So, especially if you have a really busy background. So, we have a lot of different... Um, colors on here, even though they're subtle, they could distract from our main focal point, which is our flowers and our and our photo. So what I like to use is I like to use just a little bit of white paint or gesso. Either one you have will work the same. Gesso is a little more preferred because it is a matte finish. I'm going to use paint. I'm just going to use white Liquitex basic paint. And I'm just going to pour a little bit on here. Nothing too extravagant. Again, we're not extravagant here. We're easy peasy, right? So you just take a brush and you just brush this haphazardly across the background. You want a little bit peeking out of where our layers are going to sit. So if you need to add a little bit more, you can go ahead and do that. 
like that. All right. Now what you you could even take this to another level and if you want to add kind of a different um, texture to your subtle background, take your mask and a little heavier with the paint. Now this is going to be really subtle. You just take the paint right onto your little sponge and I'm just going to dab a heavier base of paint right into our mask. And this adds just a subtle little difference in the background. Now you don't have to do that. On the original I didn't, but I wanted to show you something a little extra. Giving it another layer. Now this technique does work better when you layer paint because the gesso usually is pretty thick. So if you try to layer gesso upon gesso, you're not going to notice that much of a difference, but you could see just a light, subtle um, difference using the screen on top of our base coat of white paint. Let me wipe my little screen off so I don't get too much paint left on here. Mine usually end up a, every color of the rainbow, but here you could see the little difference there. And let me go ahead and hit this with a heat gun real quick so we are not sitting and waiting for paint to dry. How exciting is that? Yeah? Okay. Ah, oh, it's unplugged. That little rascal. Haha. In business. It doesn't take that long. Very long to jump. Alrighty. I think we're good. Next, we're going to take a larger piece of our cardboard. I would say, mm, let's see how big. I'm, I'm not a big measure, as most of you know. So my measuring is never accurate. Okay. So let's just tear off a little bit here. Let's see, you've got mm, five by five, maybe five by six. Yeah, it's about seven. So all I'm gonna do, a little five by seven piece of cards cardboard and you want to rip the paper off. Now some of these cardboards one size rip, rips off the better and if they won't rip off at all you can go ahead and spray it with like a water or mist to kind of loosen up that paper and that will help peel back that top layer too. Just a little technique there for you, a little hint. And of course, it's making me look like a fool. Okay. Okay, okay. Ooh. We don't have to do the whole entire thing because only bits and pieces of it are going to be peeking out here. Okay, I'm going to tear this so it's a little uneven. A little rougher looking than just straight cuts, yeah? All right. So we have our little paper and we're going to just place this right about here. Let's make it a little smaller, yeah? Probably tore two up much off now. Okay. So here's our, card our cardboard. I'm just going to glue this down with the beacon. 
kind of all gluing adhesive. Uh -oh. Now he's laughing. One extreme to the next, I tell you. Okay, just like that. Now we're gonna get into the elements of the paper. So we have all of our bits and pieces. And I am going to next cut out a piece of our, this card stock right, or this pattern paper right here. And this piece I'm going to cut a 10 by, let's see. Doo -dee -doo -doo. Actually like an eight by, like an eight by four piece of paper. Flip out my little guide. I like this paper too. It's very pretty. Let's put it this way. Actually, let's cut it this way. So this way is going to be like about four inches. Nothing exact. When you have to think too hard, it doesn't become fun anymore. At least for me. So we're just going to... Make sure we're lined up right. Okay. And this direction is going to be about eight, eight or nine. Let's go do nine. Okay, so we have that piece. Now what I did on the original is I used my corner punch this little guy we are memory keepers and this has just an a round corner um, corner rounder a quarter inch and a half inch I'm gonna go ahead and use the let's see the half inch on this why not right so you're just rounding off the corners I kind of like mixing and matching our um, edges kind of helps draw the eye so this is going to be our piece. I'm going to go ahead and distress it real fast. Kind of helping it match here and there. I'm not going to ink this one. I don't want to add too much color to it. So this, we're going to, uh, like that. We're going to add some three-dimensional squares underneath. Just like this. And I may have to add another layer because of how thick our cardboard is. So just like that. Okay, so just kind of center that in your page, on your page, over your piece of cardboard. And I like using elements, and I've already probably told, and I have, if you've seen my previous classes, I like using elements that are already on the paper. So we have pieces that we could already cut out that are pre-measured and you don't have to worry about measuring them out. They're already ready for you to cut. So we're going to cut out a few pieces real quick. Clean out some of my trash. Like this tag right here I'm going to use And these I'm not too worried about getting a straight line on because I'm going to end up just end up distressing the edges anyways. So it's not too tragic. I'm going to cut this pink little guy out with the ruler piece just to say what we did. There we go. Okay. Cut these apart. Okay, 
Now that's that for this piece of paper until we get down to the words. But I'm going to save those four later. And I'm going to cut out this little black and white flourish or yeah, flourish piece. And then one of our little tags. So I'm probably going to cut out memory again because that's the one I used on the original. I'm just going to roughly cut and I can go in and fine tune it once it's out. So trying to do it around a big piece of paper. Okay. Put that one aside. Just cut this real fast. Need a new pair of scissors too. My cutting instruments are becoming very tattered. And I don't, I guess I abuse them. Well, these scissors kind of went through a sister wedding and floral decorations. All right, so we have our elements that we're going to add, and I'll show you on my original how I added them. So we have our tag here. Here's the little pink piece down here that has the little um, ruler attached to it. I want to show you the pieces before I layer them down. And then this is this piece right here. And then we have our little memories that we're just going to use the uh, memories part. You could always cut off the extra if you want so that you're not wasting the whole tag. And then we have this little guy right here, which is this piece that we're gonna tuck in behind our photo. Now this layout, I have a single photo on, but you can add two or three little um, wallet size photos and get more um, of like a special day in on one layout. Instead of having big photos all over the place, you can have two or three little wallet size photos that still show you know, what was special to you about that day or significant about that um, particular situation or whatever you're scrapping about. So that's kind of a different idea of um, taking the same design and adding more photos to it. So first we are going to add our pink, little pink piece. I'm going to just stress that real fast. And I, when I do all of my pieces, I really like to layer a lot of them up. And I know not everybody does. You can lay these elements flat if you'd want, if you want to, or you could pop them up off the page. I just find it more interesting. And me lately, I've been displaying my scrapbook pages out in frames instead of in books because most of the time, one, they ended up never getting looked at. And two, they get smashed. So I like kind of rotating mine out. That, and if I'm not using them in frames, I file mine in um, like office boxes, like supply boxes. That's just my preference. So we're just going to place this guy down here. Let's place it right here. Like that. like that. Okay. Now did you all hear the exciting news? about Lisa Gibbons joining Prima. 
You guys are going to love her ideas. She has some amazing ideas coming up that you guys are really going to enjoy, enjoy I think. And that our younger crowd and our kids can enjoy and have fun with. Um, I know I like having my daughter involved with what I do, and she does as well. And I think she'd really like having a line that she can call all of her own, not just using mom's stuff, but she can have her own supplies and she can have her own papers and embellishments and she can call them, you know, her special pieces. So that's kind of exciting. And did you see that video? I worked really hard on that video. Haha. <laughs> No, Lisa's great. Lisa's great. You guys are going to really enjoy her. And you're really going to enjoy what is coming up. So, like she said, make sure you stay connected and to find out what we're going to have coming in store. So, here is this tag. I'm just going to place it down. So, we have these elements so far. And then our last piece is going to be our square. This guy, yeah. And I'm going to corner around this one as well. This one, since it's a smaller square, I'm going to go with the quarter inch rounder because it's a tighter end or tighter corner and um, looks a little more collected on the smaller piece of paper. So just like that. And try not to take too much time. Stressing. So I know you guys know how to distress. Especially with this distressing tool, they kind of just like scream to you and tell you, okay, this is how you distress, right? Right. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Layers again. Right. Okay. I think I got all my backs off. Just kind of making sure this is square since I can't really see what I'm doing. Okay. So these are the paper elements we're using. Like I said, we're, we'll use some of the alphas here for our, our title. And we could even use these words or these words. Should I use the lighter color words or the darker color words? What do you think? This is like tomorrow, this year, today. This one says moments, play, dream. I think we'll do the light ones. Okay. Let's just cut some out. Doesn't matter what they are. Show you kind of how I went about using them. Okay. So like play, I cut play. Let's move this guy out. And dream and laugh and remember and this day and all I did was I cut little banner ends in the bottom and laid them down like this just like that easy peasy right right Already, just like that. Let's go ahead and adhere those down. Oh, got to add a little guy down here. Sorry, guys. So is anybody going to Scrap Fest this weekend and having a little scrappy fun? 
already. Okay, so there's that. Now we are going to start with our embellishments, the fun part, right? Oh, my memories. Let's just cut this top off real quick. I'm just going to add a little adhesive to the back. Don't need a whole lot. I'm just going to tuck this right back here so that it sticks up. We could even um, create a little pull-out tag if you wanted to. Just make sure when you're adhering these layers down, just leave an opening to where it could slide in when you um, go ahead to put it together. But I'm just going to use the top like this. So back to our little reference. We're going to start adding our embellishments. Now my little flowers, again, I said, um, said earlier, I did um, have to swap them out for others, but they're similar. And you get the idea of kind of flower placement and things of that nature. I'm going to use this vine, and this vine is uh, Pixie, Pixie Vine in Nature Garden. And I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And I like cutting mine apart. I know some people cringe at the thought. But I really like being able to use these for more than just one straight piece. So we're going to add this little guy here. And I'm not going to glue it down quite yet because I want to make sure I have it where I want it. I am going to cut the little stem off on this piece. And I save these guys. Even if I don't use it on this project, I'll save it for another um, another piece some time, some other time. I know. Oh, the horror. Okay. Just like that. And we have this natural elements. This is a new flower from CHA. I wasn't able to get another one, but I do want to show you another like natural type flower that you could also use. How to dig through my goodies of goodies. So we can go ahead and use this one. This is similar to the texture that we used is really pretty nice linen. Go ahead, I'm going to glue this one down because I do kind of like building around my larger flowers. I start with those first and then I build around them. So we have our big flower and you can even take the center off if you wanted to, if you don't prefer that piece. Now I am going to go ahead and glue my, come on, my vine down and I just run a bead right along the main vine main stem you don't need a whole lot so that's sufficient to hold it in place good night ladies okay this one's gonna go down here okay like that. Now we have these fun little white flowers that have the buttons in the center and these are primers in bleached white and what I did was I took one of them and I cut it, took the button off and we're going to use that up here but I cut this guy in half just like this. It's about it. It's a double layer flower. You kind of got to move the petals out of the way a little bit. And I just tuck them in kind of here and there to add a little more to it, but not a lot. Like this. And then we are going to use a couple of the pearl babies in Songbird. Take a couple of these. These are kind of a nice medium flower. They are good fillers. And especially if you like the paper lines, they're already matched for you, which is really convenient. Here's another one we're going to tuck up in here. 
kind of fill in our dead space of the vines because there isn't really flowers covering the entire vine. So you kind of need to find something that fills them in, right? I know. First it's vines, then it's flowers. I'm a crazy, crazy girl, right? Okay. So then we're going to add a couple of these little guys. These are the uh, Lady Godiva's and Nugget. And they come in three different little styles. And I'm just going to take a couple of those to fill in as well. These have a nice little soft texture to them, which matches our project pretty nicely. Oh, my glue is exploding. It's mad at me because I haven't used it in a while. It's telling me something, right? Alrighty. Here, I'm going to go ahead and glue our flower down kind of in our opening. Let's see, right up here, glue our little button down. And for the finishing touches, we're going to add a little metal and trim. So the metal I'm going to be using, I have a nice little bucket of goodies that I, here's a nice fun little um, storage supply that you could use for all of your little trinkets. And I will, I got these at Ikea and they have dividers that you can take in or out. And I use these for all my little trinkets, my buttons and all of that. So that is really um, a fun little piece of um, storage tip. And I'm not sure what these are called or I tell you, but they're in the kitchen area, the kitchen department. Okay, so I'm going to use some of these vintage trinkets. And these are just little leaves, little metal leaves. I really like these because even if the the ends, we can kind of tuck them in in here or there, which that's what we're going to do. Is we're just going to tuck them to kind of give this more of a. Um, it's kind of our dark contrast. I'm gonna put one right up here, tucked behind our flower. Like that. Put one over here. And these help fill up dead space too. And I really like that they how they they look. They're very vintage feel feeling and such. So there's another way you could fill in. And these are brand new from this last CHA, and I love these. These are our metal strings, our vintage trinkets, and this is the hard string. And you get um, seven trinkets, two, four, six, yeah, seven little vintage trinkets on here. And I really, really love these. And I'm going to add a couple of hearts because I love hearts. They may not always be in, but I don't care. So I'm just going to cut off the string. I'm tucking these little guys so it doesn't really matter. Actually, let's go ahead and take the jump ring off because they do all come with a jump ring. I'm just going to take that off because I just want to glue them directly to my page. I don't want to have to tie them or anything of that nature. So I don't really need those. Oh, I almost glued that one upside down, you guys. Let's see. That. I forgot. I'm facing you guys. Ugh. And let's see. Come here. And Actually, let's put this in here. Sorry, I talked to myself. 
And all you have to do is just add a little touch of glue at the base or at the top where the jump ring would be. And these are so light, that's all the adhesive you need on these. It's just a little touch. Don't need a whole lot. And then my other little guy, where did you go? There you go. I knew you were hiding. Let's see. This one down here. And when I use different trims and laces, I don't use an entire piece. Say I want a piece that looks like it's going all the way across my page. Instead of wasting an entire, say, 10 inches of um, uh, trim, all I do is I put all my papers down first. I cut little peekaboo pieces and I glue them down that way. That way I use a lot less lace and trim than I would say if I had cut the entire piece. So here's our little peekaboo piece here. I'm going to cut a little piece over here. And then I'm just going to tuck it right there. All right. So there is your page. You can add, what I did was I took a chalk or a charcoal pencil and I just added little like doodles to make it look like our page ripped. I also did ones like over here under our flowers that looked like little hearts and they don't have to be perfect. You could kind of just sketch them out. These, I kind of, I love using this little style. I use this style on my pages a lot just a little rough, kind of a little trademark I like to include on my projects. And then I'll go in with, say, a colored pencil, just to add a little bit of color, just like that. And you can put your photos here, like you could put an, a little um, wallet photo here, you could put one here. I didn't really um, space it, I would have cut out a mat to make sure my flowers were in a, a proper position. But I just plan on putting a little wallet size here. So that is your photo or your layout for tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed. And I can't wait to see what is coming up the rest of the month and to see what else um, our great life with Prima educators have in store for you. Thank you for coming. And I really enjoy doing these with you guys. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Bye.